video will explain how to use the Evacuation Hoverjack 2 device to safely and efficiently lift and transport a patient in the following sections. Evacuation Hoverjack 2 Features and Benefits Inflating the Evacuation Hoverjack 2 Patient in Bed Lifting patient from the floor in a supine position Using the Evacuation Hoverjack 2 for a stairwell evacuation Using the Evacuation Hoverjack 2 for patient transport The Evacuation Hoverjack 2 is an air-assisted patient lift and transport device that was designed to meet the demands of the EMS market. It can be used to lift a patient in a supine position from the ground to bed or stretcher height and to transport the patient across most any surface and downstairs. It has a 1,200-pound vertical lift weight limit and a 750-pound weight limit for transport up or downstairs. A minimum of three caregivers is needed to use the Evacuation Hoverjack 2. It is a latex-free device. The Evacuation Hoverjack 2 has four inflation chambers. Each one has a black, one-way valve through which the air supply inflates the chamber. The chamber valves are labeled and numbered from 1 to 4, with the chamber labeled Valve 1 being the closest to the floor. It is not necessary to cap the black valves unless the patient will remain on the inflated device for an extended period of time. Each chamber also has a red-capped valve to be used for quick deflation. There's an inflatable wedge pillow for patient comfort at the head end that also has one black one-way valve and one red-capped quick deflate valve. The bottom two chambers of the device are covered by a protective zippered skirt for durability. The skirt features a zippered Teflon bottom for easy transport across most any surface. Both the skirt and the Teflon bottom can easily be removed and replaced if they become worn or damaged. A zippered foot pouch keeps the patient secure during transport. There are eight perimeter transport handles, two at the foot end, two at the head end, and two on each side. There are two patient safety straps, one at the chest, and one that secures below the patient's knees to prevent the patient's legs from buckling. The full body harness straps extend over the length of the evacuation hoverjack 2 and buckle at the head end of the device. There are four steering straps, two at the head end and two at the foot end. The steering straps should be stowed in the strap pocket located on each side of the skirt when not in use. To clean the evacuation hoverjack 2, wipe it down after each use with a medical grade disinfectant. It is important to note that it cannot be machine laundered. If available, Use the Hovermat air transfer system to transfer the patient to and from the evacuation hoverjack 2. The Hovermat is a lateral transfer and repositioning device used in conjunction with the Hovertech air supply. The air supply inflates the Hovermat to cushion and cradle the patient. At the same time, air escapes from thousands of holes in the bottom of the Hovermat to reduce friction and the force needed to move the patient, making patient handling tasks easier. The Hovermat has a weight limit of 1,200 pounds and is available in different sizes to accommodate patient width. Hovertech also offers the single patient use Hovermat for enhanced infection control. The Hovermat has perimeter transfer handles that are designed to ensure that the caregiver always remains close to the patient for safety during inflated Hovermat use. This is called the stay close approach. There are two safety straps that buckle over the patient. Always ensure that the safety strap buckles are secured for lateral transfers and that the straps are not tight against the patient's body, since they will tighten as the hover mat is inflated. The hover mat has two hose entries, one on either side of the foot end of the mattress. The label on the hover mat indicates the foot end and top side of the mattress. To operate the hover mat and evacuation hover jack 2 with Hovertech's original air supply models, Air 200G or Air 400G, press the gray button to initiate airflow. Press the button again to stop airflow. Both the reusable Hovermat transfer mattress and air supply should be disinfected between patient uses. The reusable transfer mattress can also be machine laundered according to manual instructions. If the patient is in bed and needs to be evacuated from the home, transfer the patient onto the inflated evacuation Hoverjack 2 using the Hovermat air transfer mattress if available. Begin by log rolling the Hovermat air transfer mattress underneath the patient, making sure the side with the label is facing up and at the patient's feet. Buckle the patient safety straps, ensuring that they remain loose as they will tighten around the patient when the Hovermat is inflated. 
Bring the deflated evacuation hover jack to next to the patient's bed and release all buckles. Ensure that the red deflation valves are capped and that the self-sealing black inflation valves are uncapped and easily accessible. Plug the air supply power cord into the nearest available electrical outlet and press the power button on the air supply unit. Begin inflating the device by placing the hose end over the black valves, starting with the chamber closest to the ground, labeled valve number one. It is important that each chamber is inflated in sequence for safety, starting with the chamber labeled valve number one, which is closest to the floor. If chambers are inflated out of order, the evacuation hover jack two can become unstable. To ensure that each air chamber is fully inflated, remember to look, listen, and feel. Look. Watch the chamber inflate. If the patient is on the device, you will notice the patient's body will stop rising when the chamber is fully inflated. Listen. The sound of the air supply will change to a higher pitch once the chamber is fully inflated. Feel. The chamber should feel rock hard to the touch. There is no risk of overinflating the evacuation hover jack too, but underinflating chambers could lead to a potential safety risk. Always be sure each chamber is completely filled before moving on to the next chamber. When you have determined that the first chamber is fully inflated, move the air hose to the valve in the second chamber, labeled valve number two, and repeat the look, listen, and feel technique until fully inflated. Continue the same process for air chamber valves labeled three and four. Once all chambers are inflated, press the power button on the air supply to stop the flow of air. Position the evacuation hover jack two as close to the adjacent transfer surface as possible, making sure that the foot pouch is unzipped and the safety straps are out of the way. At least one crew member should be next to the patient while another is positioned against the device on the receiving side. Inform the patient what they will hear and experience while being laterally transferred from the bed onto the evacuation hover jack two. Insert the air supply hose into the hovermat air transfer mattress snapping the hose in place and securing the Velcro flap. Press the power button on the air supply to initiate airflow and inflate the hover mat. The crew member on the patient side will initiate the transfer by pushing the hover mat onto the evacuation hover jack two at an angle, either feet or head first. The crew member on the opposite side receives the patient by grasping the handle and pulling the hover mat and the patient to complete the transfer. The receiving crew member should maintain an upright stance and wait for the handles to be within reach to assist. One crew member will make sure the patient is centered on the evacuation hover jack too before instructing the crew member at the foot end to turn off the air supply. Zip the foot pouch over the patient's feet and lower legs. Buckle the evacuation hover jack two safety straps and body harness loosely over the patient. Bring the air supply to the back of the device and inflate the head pillow if desired using the same inflation technique demonstrated with chambers one through four. After the pillow is inflated, adjust the safety straps until taut. If the patient is on the floor and needs to be lifted in a supine position, log roll the patient onto the evacuation hover jack two or onto the hover mat air transfer mattress if available. In this case, the patient has fallen in the bathroom and the crew will use the hover mat to extract the patient from the space and move him onto the deflated evacuation hover jack two. Secure as much of the hover mat under your patient as possible using a log rolling technique. Inflate the hover mat and move the patient from the fall site onto the deflated evacuation hover jack two. Make sure that the patient's head is below the head end seam of the device and that the patient's body is centered. Deflate the hover mat and disconnect the air supply hose. Buckle the hover mat and evacuation hover jack two patient safety straps loosely around the patient. Be sure to leave some slack in the strapping prior to the inflation of the device as the straps will tighten slightly after inflation. One caregiver should be positioned near the patient's head holding a transport handle to reassure the patient and to ensure stability while the other caregiver remains at the foot end to inflate the evacuation hover jack two. Explain to the patient what he will hear and feel. Then begin inflating the device starting with the chamber labeled valve number one. Use the look, listen, and feel technique to ensure the chamber is full and then repeat the process with valves number two, three, and four. Zip the foot pouch and buckle the evacuation hover jack two body harness loosely over the patient. 
bring the air supply to the back of the device and inflate the head pillow if desired, using the same inflation technique demonstrated with chambers number one through four. After the pillow is inflated, adjust the safety straps until taut. Before going down the stairs or through a doorway, it is important to look for sharp edges, corners, railings, or any other objects that could potentially damage the evacuation hover jack too. This is called clearing the flight path. In order to navigate narrow doorways or sharp corners, crew members may bleed air from each of the four chambers by depressing the black one-way valves. This will soften the chamber slightly to accommodate tight spaces. Reinflate the chambers after you have cleared the narrow space to ensure maximum stability while transporting. Using the foot end steering straps and the transport handles, move the patient on the inflated evacuation hover jack 2 to the widest stairwell available, positioning the device so that the patient will be transported feet first down the stairs. Before descending the stairs, the top two chambers closest to the patient, chambers number three and four, will need to be fully deflated. Crew members should be positioned on each side of the evacuation hover jack 2 when deflating the chambers to ensure a balanced and secure deflation. Chambers number one and two will remain fully inflated. Inform the patient that the top chambers will be deflated and explain what they will hear and feel. Begin bleeding out the air by depressing the black one-way valve labeled valve number four to reduce the pressure, then fully release the air by opening the uppermost red deflate valve on chamber number four. When chamber number four is fully deflated, repeat the process for chamber number three. Do not release both chambers at once. When both chambers are fully deflated, retighten the straps and move into the stairwell. The crew members will then work in unison to facilitate the stairwell descent. In tight stairwells, crew members can stagger their positions to make it easier to navigate the descent. While the crew members at the head end hold the head end steering straps and transport handles, the foot end crew member will begin to pull the patient down the stairs using the foot end steering straps. The Teflon coated bottom will allow the evacuation hover jack 2 to easily slide down the stairs. The crew members at the head end should control most of the weight, while the crew member at the foot end controls the steering. It is very important to ensure the patient stays centered on the device and that the patient's head does not slump forward and restrict breathing. Once you have reached ground level, use the steering straps and transport handles to move the patient to safety. The Teflon bottom will allow the evacuation hover jack 2 to slide over most any surface, including snow, grass, and gravel. Once next to the stretcher, inflate chambers number 3 and 4 sequentially, bringing the device up to the height of the stretcher. Unbuckle the patient's safety straps and body harness and unzip the foot pouch. Ensure that the hover mat safety straps are buckled. Insert the air supply hose into the hover mat. With at least one crew member on the receiving side of the stretcher and another crew member next to the patient, transfer the patient from the evacuation hover jack 2 to the stretcher. One crew member will provide a visual check at the head end to ensure the patient is centered on the stretcher and then inform the crew member at the foot end to press the power button on top of the air supply to deflate the hover mat. We instructed on the use of the Evacuation Hover Jack 2 as a transport, lift, and stairwell evacuation device. Here are the key points from this section. A minimum of three crew members is needed to use the Evacuation Hover Jack 2. The device has a 1,200 pound vertical lift weight limit and a 750 pound weight limit for transport up or down stairs. If available, use a hover mat air transfer system to transfer the patient onto the Evacuation Hover Jack 2. Always make sure the safety straps are loose when inflating the chambers and be sure to tighten and readjust the safety straps after deflating any chambers. Use the transport handles and steering straps to move the patient on the evacuation hover jack too. Never use the safety straps to pull the device. Always clear the flight path before moving the evacuation hover jack too to avoid damage to the device. Please refer to the evacuation hover jack 2 manual for complete instructions.